What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I am here with the lovely Karina Round. How are you today? Great. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I'm excited about this uh, upcoming stream you got April 17th with Pussifer. I'm excited for everyone to see it. It's uh, It was extremely fun to perform. I mean, that was the last money shot was the last record that um, we toured like really toured, mm -hmm. like touring was before, around the world. And, you know, just that immersive, I'm just salivating thinking about it, the feeling of touring, the camaraderie with the band, the crew, you know, the feeling of the audience, all of that, like that, you know, I've toured solo since then, but that was the last big tour with buses and people and, so it was very significant for me to get back up and and perform this record it just brought that all back and it made touring again feel like a possibility <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i mean how how I, you know i want to keep talking about that but just to kind of touch base with you like how, how have you been handling the whole pandemic lockdown i know a lot of artists are usually pretty recluse anyway because you're either creating art or you're on tour and doing that but mm -hmm. you know either way this is a tough time for for all musicians so how have you been kind of uh dealing with it have you been creating more or has it kind of been affecting your creativity um i think at the beginning you know everyone was like oh great i'm gonna clean out my garage and organize my house and then you know, when the reality hit of, no, you're not going to do that. And you're also not going to do anything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was when, luckily, we had existential reckoning happening. And we, when we were in lockdown, we weren't allowed to go to work. We took a couple of weeks off, but um, as soon as we could, we got back to work. You know, there's very little that could stop this band doing stuff yeah. and well certainly a pandemic didn't well made it more difficult not more difficult i mean than anyone else but what made it really difficult for me personally is i have a three-year-old who i had to take out of school and also a 12 year old stepdaughter who also came out of school um so it's just fucking mayhem and my <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you know, I'm in a relationship with a musician also. So in some ways it it was a little easier because we could create our own schedule and we weren't, you know, under the thumb of a big corporation. And you know, but in others it was it's just a sh it's been a shit show for everyone. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine having kids in the pandemic and having to know the homeschooling situation and uh, trying to figure out how to operate a, a regular adult life while not having that option of like just handing your kids to school or something, you know, for um, at least a few hours that you can be an adult. But um, actually, halfway through, it got to so much for me that I. I actually rented myself a studio that I could oh. work and make my own records for the first time in my life. I've never owned my own studio before. So that came from it. I probably wouldn't have done that if it weren't for the pandemic, if it weren't for me feeling like if I didn't do this, I might explode. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, that's, that's a benefit, I think, uh, that a lot, a lot of musicians have taken advantage of. Uh, is the opportunity to be more creative or maybe put yourself in a different situation so that mm -hmm. you can be more creative because yeah. you know for example the the live stream that's coming uh that's that to me is the right direction that musicians should be taking creating this really cool looking experience that kind of mimics the live show but it's not just you guys performing you know yeah. in, a, in a stage yeah. I think it, the live stream throughout this time has become its own art form. And mm. I think, you know, immediately, you know, Matt and Maynard just sunk their teeth into that. It's just, a, just uh, it's almost like they've been waiting for a reason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the ideas and 
you know, the Arcasanti thing was just its own beautiful, unique experience. And I think you're right. I think the life form is this portal of creativity where the sorry, the live stream where you can it can be part music video and part live show and a bunch of psychedelic shit in between and that's exactly what we do. Yeah, that that Arco Santi show was incredible. I mean, how how difficult was it to time? Because I know that there there's a song where you guys timed it uh, that like, the song ends as the sun is coming out. Like, was there many reshoots, or was that just kind of like perfect timing? What do you think? <laughs> I think there was a lot of reshoots. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get out to do that. Yeah, um, that that seemed like a, a crazy adventure for sure it was it was uh, I mean it was an intense burst of a few days of nailing that whole thing and then it was a long stretch of feeling like what the fuck just happened <laughs> <laughs> and then we yeah. had to watch it and it was like oh yeah that's what happened next yeah, yeah, it came out beautifully. It came out beautifully, and I'm excited. I'm excited for this new one just because I'm a big lucha lucha fan. And oh, I love it, Ben. Yeah, I mean, I went to the show. Uh, I have the poster up on my wall from San Diego, May first, 2016, which is the big lucha show with the the ring on the stage and a couple of my friends, actually, the Lucha Vavum and you know uh, oh. Eli Everfly. All all those folks are are friends. So funny. Did you guys learn uh, some lucha? Did you end up taking some classes for some lucha stuff? No. <laughs> I mm. figured uh, maybe the 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 whole thing would inspire you to kind of, I don't know, take a look at it. <laughs> well, I would love to, but I, you know, Maynard also does like Brazilian jiu jitsu and Muay Thai and all kinds of shit like that. So yeah, uh, you know, he's got his own thing with them going on, but. I, I mean, maybe one day. They, yeah. they were, we were threatening now that you say it. I remember we were threatening throughout the whole tour that I was going to do some move on Joey or Joey was going to, you know, or Eli was going to do something. Like I would end up like throwing someone or it just never happened. But <laughs> I love those guys. It was really great to see them again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it's, I mean, I saw, I think the Mayan Theater is this where this was filmed right and i can't remember i think i'm i'm off here but there was a show that i went to a pussifer show that i went to it was a different tour it was the the one that maynard walks out with the trailer and starts talking to the audience yeah. was that, that at the mayan theater uh, that was the ace i think or the orpheum one of those two. oh maybe it was the orpheum yeah yeah okay never mind my memory uh, that was not good but that was a beautiful show too, because you opened up that show with your solo stuff. Oh uh, yes! Oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. Sorry, I'm gonna have a beep. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, you opened up the show, and and I remember just being blown away, like thinking, "Wow, she's gonna do two full sets. That's uh, intense." Yeah, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> it was the happiest time of my life. Just you know, being on tour, playing music for like four hours nonstop. No, I loved it. How do you, I mean, that sounds exhausting. And, and do you do anything special for your voice like so that it doesn't get hoarse by the end of the night or anything like that? No, I didn't. I do yeah. now. But as I get up, I have to do warm-ups and warm-downs and things like that. I think back then, it was probably just like make as Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good warm-up for me, I think. I uh, usually, if it's a, if I'm doing a podcast later at night or like in the evening, I'm definitely drinking something to keep me warmed up yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, He's keeping me company with that too. Yeah. I'm, have you been able to work on any more solo stuff during this time? Yeah. That's why I got my studio so that I could okay. make music. How, how's that going coming along? I mean, do you, are you looking like maybe a release in 2021 or is there something I maybe further ahead? I probably want to spend the rest of the year writing more because I haven't, you know, I haven't really had the time to do it 
in the past few years and I've done it sporadically and you know when people were sleeping or when no one was in my house which is never or you know just whilst driving or whatever you come up whenever you come up with whatever you come up with um so I just want to immerse myself in this space and you know become like completely um narcissistic for the next six months and uh see what happens very cool and i'm assuming it's going to be kind of in the same like do you have a a genre or theme in mind like uh, is it going to because i know your previous work is mostly acoustic um Mm -hmm. so is it going to be in that way um there was an acoustic ep kind of acoustic sounding but tiger mending wasn't really acoustic it was really Mm -hmm. produced I don't know. I think, well, I've, all the songs that I've written so far on this record are written on piano, which I don't really play. Yeah, so That's odd. <laughs> yeah, I just was, I got so bored of feeling or hearing where my hands would go on a guitar, you know, because I'm not, not particularly proficient. So there was little habits that I would have, and um, I just want to break that. I want to crack that. So I got a piano, I got a, a ARP 2600 synthesizer, you know, and um, obviously I still have guitars and shit ton of pedals and stuff. So yeah, I just want to, I just want to hide. <laughs> hide and create. Uh, are you bringing in anybody for, for like guest appearances? Are you, are you talking to other artists or is this going to be solely just you? Just you? Oh, you don't know. Writing is just me so far, but there's definitely going to be other people playing on the record. If there's drums or bass or something, I don't, I don't want to fuck up all the good work by trying to play everything on the record. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I imagine that you're going to, you know, you're, you're planning on touring, uh, probably all of 2022 or 23 uh, when things open back up and, you know, everybody's, uh, I guess vaccinated or, you know, the world is opened back up. Um, yeah, just try and stop me. Try and yeah. Stop. I was going to say, so I, I assume you're going to tour, you know, your stuff. And also I'm sure Pussifer is going to hit the road because they didn't do a proper tour for his essential reckoning. Yeah. Um, are you planning on maybe doing the same thing where, you, you know, you open up the show with your stuff and then Pussifer, or do you want to do your own individual thing? Yeah, I don't know that I'll be opening the show again for Pussifer. Maybe. Who knows? That would be great. I loved doing that. But um, I feel like Pussifer is more likely to find something weird and crazy to open. Um, But yeah, I'll be touring with my own stuff when there's a record out and you know, I don't know how many venues are going to be bookable for the next five years. I feel like everyone that uh, canceled during the pandemic is going to be touring for the next two years. And then the rest of us can think about booking shows. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine an oversaturation, I think, um, coming up from of shows. Hopefully, hopefully the, the live stream vibe will keep going people will keep doing that stuff and using that art form yeah I, I i hope so too it's been very creative i mean you guys are killing it that there's other groups that have been doing a really great job uh putting together stuff that's that's not just you know the musicians in their bedrooms with the zoom call yeah. like it's, a, it's a nice production value and you know but people doing that at the beginning of the pandemic and a part of me was like oh you probably <laughs> do it too but I just don't, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. And when, what I put out there to be special in a different way, you know, maybe I will, but I'll try and make it unique in some way or another. But, you know, with an acoustic guitar on my couch, like I did that so many times in my life. Nobody needs to see that anymore. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, even just throw, you know, throwing up a light in your room and like maybe a fog machine or something, you know? Or, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I also, 
I really, it was very important for me during this pandemic to focus on parenting my child correctly because it's a stressful time and I, you know, I can't control my stress levels at this point and he's just like, luckily he's young enough to not really know how life is supposed to be. But, right, yeah. you know, I haven't, yeah, it's been fine. It's been well, good. yeah, I was, I, I was going to say, I, I, I'm, I've thought about this a lot and it's kind of daunting in my brain. Like, you know, all these kids that are, you know, one, two, maybe three years old during this time, like this is all they know. Mm-hmm. All they know is not going outside. Everybody's wearing a mask and it's, oh, it's. Deprogram or reprogram. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, hmm. it, I, I hopefully doesn't create like a whole socially awkward generation, but uh, I yeah. hope it's all it's all on the parents, I think, too, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think, but also, you know, as humans, we're very adaptable, as you've seen in the yeah. last year. Um, let's get all these insane murders and fucking mass shootings under control and you know focus on creating things and doing good in our lives yeah uh to get a little weird um since you know it's kind of thematical with the with the essential reckoning uh mm-hmm. the, the alien abduction and all that mm-hmm. do you think that in an because i think about that a lot like how can we fix these mass shootings and these societal issues I don't know if we can with what we have. I feel like there has to be some kind of uh, third party, you know, assistance in this matter. Like, I don't I don't know how we can evolve past this, like, animalistic, savage, cave, lizard brain, you know? I think it's. Everyone wants to blow their top right now because they've been under a lid in a steaming hot pot for the last over a year. Mm -hmm. And there's just a certain amount of insane people in the world, in the country, and they're also feeling that way. Just it's unfortunate and and disgusting that the way they they are expressing it is is that way. You know, I just who knows what kind of state the world is in really and how much you can believe what you're told on the news. But I think in terms of individually, you know, we just have to remain accountable and responsible for who we are, like focus on our work and creating good things, being present in the moment, which so many of us just don't know how to do anymore. Um, Raising mindful humans with real tools to allow them to take on real life, uh, take social media for what it is and keep it at a correct kind of distance. And, you know, I just think if we all remain accountable as individuals and present, it, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. Yeah, it's getting harder to do with, like you said, the social media thing. Everybody's kind of at a at a distance from each other where they can post whatever comment and like bully someone with words just to just because they know there's no repercussions. There's no, like you said, accountability for for their actions. You know, they're like, I'll just put you suck or oh, my God, this music is terrible or you're so ugly. Like it, it's 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 too easy now to be a bully uh, on the Internet, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it vacillates between like no accountability for the individual saying things to people and then just like, you know, people being canceled for things that they did 25 years ago because of, <laughs> yeah, like you say, being bullied and I don't know where I don't, like I say, I think the only answer is to because if you think about it in terms of social media we're still in that period of time it's kind of new and we're we got swallowed up into the the vacuum of it and we're 
like dealing with the insanity of the extremes of it right now. I think, you know, as adults, we can learn from what it is, see it for what it is, step back and raise our children to just know the truth of what it is and teach them how not to be completely sucked into it. And maybe we can crawl out of this hole, the social media hole that we all fell into as an, as an entire society. I can't do it. I can't open it. I can't look at it. It takes three or four minutes of me doing this to feel my brain dying. <laughs> I'm starting to die. I can feel myself becoming depressed, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. hopeless. And I... And it's the more I do it, the harder and harder it is for me to be present when I'm not on it, you know? And for me as a parent, it's, that's the most important thing for me right now is to just be present with what I'm doing, make the choice. I'm talking to you right now, you know, be present. I'm working, be completely focused on that. Like also as a parent, you just have slivers of time to do certain things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I've learned particularly how to focus more. Super important. And, you know, a lot of parents that I've met or I've seen that have children that are kind of like, you know, I don't want to be judgy, but, you know, you see certain children that are like, <laughs> you know, yelling and screaming and like, ah, I want this. It's like they, they, they resort to just kind of switching off and like, here, here's the iPad. Like, go watch your cartoon or something or go you know go do something else well i will say and i don't want this to turn into a parenting podcast (laughs) won't have kids that's the last thing you give a shit about but yeah i don't judge fucking parents anymore Hmm. i just don't like it's it's hard it's hard being a parent and it's really fucking hard being a parent during pandemic mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. they can you know what i feel you whatever you <laughs> whatever you gotta do in that moment <laughs> yeah. yeah being a parent in a pandemic during this technological time and also being a musician in a very successful band uh cannot be easy at all and i salute you for even taking the time to even talk to me. Like I would just be like, no, no, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have time, but uh, it could be a lot worse. I'm yeah. really grateful for my life. It's pretty great. I'm I have my own studio. I have a beautiful family. I have this band that, you know, I get to be creative in, but don't really have the fiscal responsibility. And, you know, I ha- I also have my own stuff that I can work on to satiate that part of my needs. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I, again, you're, yes, you're lucky, but I also salute you for your, your hard work because you you are putting in the work and uh, it's, it's, a parent when you see the quality of the work that you're putting out that that you're not just kind of winging it you're yeah, putting I, it in there well that's the one that's the that's the one thing about Pussifer. i think everybody involved is like wants to go above and beyond where they've ever gone before they're they have this innate quality control that is you know far beyond what else what anyone else could ever expect of them and everybody involved just gets you know particularly matt me and maynard we just have a certain work ethic and nothing will get in the way and i think you know that shines through in what we create definitely i agree i agree um if you were let's say you know maynard shuts down pussifer says we're done that was it uh would you want to continue on your own or would you try and start another band situation with some other uh, musicians? And if so, is there any musicians in your mind that you're like, you would love to work with like some kind of, you know, fantasy gig? 
I mean, I already had a band that there's nothing like this band. I mean, I can't speak for everyone else's experience in their bands, but it's from my own experience, it, it, it's not this easy ever, hmm. you know, this is a great, it's a great situation. Everybody, because of the trust we have in each other is completely fearless. You know, there's a, ch you know, a chain of command for if some, you know, if everybody does what they want to do, but if someone doesn't like it, then it either goes away or you have an adult conversation about it. There's no fighting. There's no like immaturity or insanity. Well, there's immaturity. Obviously, you've seen the comedy, but um, <laughs> you know, everyone has their everyone has the thing that they do, and they're trusted in that area, and it allows for a certain fearlessness and a certain ease, you know, and a, a certain breadth of creative creativity and. I I would not search for that in other places because I know the reality. I've been in bands with other people and it's it's beyond frustrating to feel like you want to push push the boundaries of what you've created together and other people don't feel that way. It's right. um it's heartbreaking. So I think I think I'd just probably be solo. Obviously, there's musicians I want to collaborate with, but, you know, well, I will at this point. You know, I st I'm still to make my record, so. Okay, that's a good, that's a good answer. I, I, I feel like you've captured lightning in a bottle, I guess, with, with what happened with Pocifer and mm -hmm. that relationship. And I hear you. I mean, I was in a band. I, I get it's like being married to, you know, four or five other people and having these discussions and, like, a lot of the times people's egos get in the way or other, you know, just other conflicts, uh, other issues that come to, to the surface and they take it out on each other. So if you have that kind of scenario, I can see not wanting to to have to try and find that again, because it's hard. It's hard, like you said, to find some musicians I, that you can talk to. My ego and I don't mind the rub, you know, in that way, as long as what everyone's doing is trying to serve the song and serve the music. And what I don't appreciate is apathy and mm. just trying, not trying. Yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to do something different to what I've done before. I want to be better. I want to be better than me. I don't give a shit about anyone else. I just want to be better than me. That's a good way to think about it. And, and a lot of people don't, think that way they think uh i want to be better than that guy it's like no no be better than you you're <laughs> you can be better than that you know and that's that's very admirable quality and you are better than that guy because you you're the only one <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i'm doing what you do um so just to kind of you know we have we're running out of time but just wanted to get some more like personal things on you uh during this time i know you're busy you got music you got your kid uh have you been able to have you picked up a new hobby outside of music and all of that anything like comic books or knitting or so, you know, i have one of my buddies knitting now so i'm like uh, okay <laughs> you must have a lot of time no no time for that yeah uh i'm trying to think of the last time i did something like that no i've been busier during this pandemic than i've ever been in my life yeah. Just doing, I don't know why. <laughs> well, parenting. I mean, you know, new new child. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, and then I also had, you know, it, did you discover any kind of new uh, fascination, like food wise? Like, you know, for example, I with my extra time, I've now dedicated myself more to cooking, uh, to learning how to cook properly, and all of that. Is there anything? Uh, did you change your diet? Like some people went vegan during this time to kind of help I with this. About fifteen or sixteen times. I mean, that's, I've changed my diet about fifteen <laughs> times during the pandemic. 
that's kind of what I'm like anyway. I'm kind of a pretty extreme person. So if I do anything, it's, it's extreme. So, you know, about a month before the first, the first live stream, I just stopped eating and did a juice fast for 20 oh. So, you know, just things like that, change it up so that I can feel like, I don't know, I, I, most of the time I have to feel like there's something extreme happening in order to feel like anything is happening at all. Gotcha. Not the best character trait, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's what, cre- it's a good character trait for artists, I'd yeah, say. I try, to, uh, I try to harness it in positive things these days for sure well i appreciate you taking some time out of your very busy schedule to talk to me uh i've been a fan for a very long time not just with pussifer but i like your solo stuff a lot and uh you know my wife is a big fan as well i do yeah she one of the things that my, my wife loves and she was trying to figure out a way to word a question for you uh without coming off as like weird but it was like she just really appreciates the fact that you as a female musician you're not using your you're not using sex to sell you're using talent to sell you know and uh, we didn't know how to word a question like how, how do you feel about that or how music industry handles that but we just wanted to show our appreciation for what you do and, and how you handle yourself thank you i yeah. appreciate it it's uh it's something that's important to me actually yeah uh, you know just watching the footage for this last money shot. Um, I mean, I'm 42 now, so there's not going to be a lot of tits and ass happening. <laughs> um, it's not classy after a certain age anyway, but, you know, I, I was watching my own performance just you know, I have a 12 year old stepdaughter just thinking like, yeah, I would like her, her friends, you know, people like that to be watching my performance or what I'm doing and be able to relate to it and just think, yeah, she's, what she's doing is cool. She's a badass. I want to be, I want to do that. I want to be like that. She looks cool without having to over sexualize things and you know the, I want the overriding thing to be my what I'm doing my gift my talent my art I think in the long run if you're pushing something else eventually you're going to, it's going to be diluted and there's going to be nothing there. Yeah. And right. for forever. And hopefully that climate is changing in terms of women being able to continue having a career as a serious artist long after they are of the age of being sexualized, right. you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be there, I feel, just because it's, it's just, uh, obviously, life needs balance. So there's always going to be some kind of that's going to exist, but mm-hmm. it would be good to understand the value. And, like, it, it's just the whole movement to, of, of, of women taking their place in, in higher echelons and, and, and showing their talent in other ways and just be like, hey, look, I, you know, I'm half naked. Like, that's not, that's not a, a thing. Like, it's not, and the older I get, the more I understand that too. Cause obviously when you're a young boy, it's like, who cares, you know, but. Oh, and you know, also this, it, in terms of women wanting to do that, there's nothing wrong with it. Just like, if that's your thing, then of course, but you know, people like Billie Eilish are going to change the fucking world. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread, in my opinion. I wish I had had that when I was twelve. You know. Yeah, yeah. She was. She's. She really blew my mind. The way that she presents herself, her talent, her music itself. Like a lot of my friends were giving me crap about, it. like, "Oh, you're listening to pop music now." I'm like, "Dude." <laughs> Even if you never heard of 
the sound out of her mouth. She's a, she's a very important figure in the world today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree completely. And I think that if you're right now listening to this and you're questioning the Billie Eilish thing because you saw one song on on the TV or whatever, go listen to the album. There's some really amazing like jazzy uh experimental things in there that I love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much again for your time. Everybody that's watching and listening, uh oh, post to say that we have a video coming out on Monday for oh. Bullet Train and to Iowa. Was it Monday or Friday? Sorry, Maynard. I wasn't listening. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a video coming out yeah. uh, soon. The story, I think, is going to be it's going to be a bridge between in terms of storyline between the Money Shot performance and the Arcasanti performance. Okay, that's good. It's probably him saying, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm listening and you're ruining it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so there's a video leading up to the performance. The performance itself is April 17th. You can get tickets to that now. Uh, there's also exclusive merch and all that good stuff. Shirts and collectibles. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, Pussifer, Billy D, and the Hall of Feathered Serpents my favorite album from you guys um I, I i think i've listened to that album more than any album for the last couple of years yeah it's uh, funny visiting it was just like this is really good yeah yeah it's a really great album it's all it's it, you know it's all over the spectrum in terms of of you know you got some heavy hitters and then you got some more melodic droney kind of things and one of my life goals to this day still is to go to the grand canyon and listen to grand canyon full blast if i can you know yeah i gotta do that uh, and, and now that i live in california it's easier i can make that drive so drive this weekend <laughs> this weekend huh? i'm just gonna go let's just go yeah <laughs> all right uh yes so uh pussiferlive.com is the website to get the tickets and uh, you can watch a trailer for it if you like lucha libre like me you'll you'll be hooked you'll be in and if you like music and, and, and beautiful art and creative production, it's just, uh, it's something to behold. So, uh, Karina. Like boobs and butts. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> there is a lot of it. There's a lot of boobs and butts. Mm -hmm. Maynard come out uh, half naked with a, like a, some kind of suit. Like I saw him on some like show or something with like a giant dildo thing, like, as satan i forget what it's called something he did a few years ago and i'm like jesus like, what's going on? i'm literally a, there's not even a, a iota of surprise in my body <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're getting yeah i don't once you enter the pussifer album cycle you just have to be an open mind Correct. Correct. Yeah. Cause it, it's not, you know, it doesn't take itself too seriously. The music is serious, but you know, there's comedy, like you mentioned earlier, the comedy is amazing and it's just, it's about life and every aspect of it. Not just one thing. It's not just metal or just rock or just whatever. It's all yeah. of it. Ridiculous. But you know, also his lyrics are fucking brilliant. Yeah. So it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. You can enjoy it for a, all the reasons. Well, I know we did the sign off and everything, but I forgot to ask you that. Like, oh. how much how much involvement do you have lyrically? Like, yeah. are you, are, none. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Well, again, thanks again, and uh, follow follow. You know, you don't do a lot of social media, like you said. I looked at your Twitter, and it's kind of you haven't Our really done. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done much on there, but either way, I would keep uh, keep an eye on on Karina's career uh, through social media, through Pussifer, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the new album. Stay safe and uh, stay sane. Someone's calling me. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Have a good one. Take care. <laughs>